You're listening to the smartest guys in marketing, the best show on the planet for client businesses to learn about traffic, funnels, sales, conversions, and marketing coolness. Chris and Taylor are the founders of Traffic and Funnels, a digital marketing consultancy helping you get paid clients from cold traffic daily. Now, here are your hosts, Chris and Taylor. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Smartest Guys in Marketing Podcast here with your host, Chris Evans and Taylor T. Money Welch. What's up, my friend? Everybody, I want you to do one thing for me and one thing only. I want you to pull over to the side of the road and I want you to whip out your smartphone and I want you to share this episode with a friend Mm. because we're going to be talking about hacks to staying happy. Yes. How many of you know somebody who could be a little bit happier in their life? A little more joy. They need a little more joy in their life. Dude, happiness is a, is a weird thing because when we started studying success, when we started becoming successful, getting, making more money and, and all of the stuff, we found out real quick that it really isn't about how much you have as much as it is about how you feel about what you have. Yeah. You know, the, the thrill is never satisfied. In fact, Ray Dalio, I was reading his book and copying his notes into my note-taking system, which if you're a Memo subscriber, you're going to get, I've got like 20 pages of notes on this book. Hello, holla dollar, book. hop on great the memos. Book. Anyways, he talks about when he started becoming wealthy, he started talking to other people in his station. He realized that it didn't matter how much money someone had. The people who were worth 50 billion, the people who were worth 10 billion, the people who were worth a million, none of them felt like they had enough money to do what they wanted to do. And I was like, what? Highlighted, underlined. It's like this, this thing where it is more important that you feel you control how you feel about your life than probably anything else. It's the measure of how long you're going to survive. Yeah. Yeah. That DNA of an entrepreneur is it's a blessing and it's a curse, right? It's a blessing because it's the drive. It's a fuel. It's the fire to push you, keep you going to hit new heights, but it's a curse because it can always keep you in a place of dissatisfaction to where you hate yourself, you hate your life, you hate your family. And all you want to do is grind, 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 push, push, push. And that can keep you in a negative feedback loop where you're just a, an awful person to be around. Nobody likes you. You don't like yourself. And so you're like, one of the reasons like why we wanted... <laughs> Everybody hates cats. <laughs> Dude, we're going to get so much hate mail. <laughs> All the cat ladies that listen to the podcast. No, but yeah. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, man, that they have a hard time being happy. And I think we catch ourselves in that. It's like we have so many things to be grateful for. We're going to give you guys just uh, four practical tips on how to hack your happiness. But it's just, you know, it's really important to state that it's okay to be happy. Yeah. It's okay as an entrepreneur. No, that doesn't mean, bro, that we're not saying that like you can just be lazy and be like, oh, it's important. It's more important about what I, whether I feel like I'm taking care of my family than whether I'm actually taking care of my family. No, loser, failure, disappointing human being. Get off this podcast if that's you. I know people who are not, they're not living their best, but they're happy and they've got like serious mental issues. What I'm talking about, and I think what you're talking about too, is when you're operating in a level day to day where you're making progress, but you're not focused on that progress because all you care about is getting to the next goal and the next goal and the next goal. These are some ways that you can balance that out and actually, you know, not kill yourself before you turn 50 yeah, or 40, or 30, however old you are, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, the reason why, dude, there's, there's so many entrepreneurs who are just in a constant state of depression. So true. Yeah. So, so true. Let's, let's break down some tips unless you have anything else to say on that. All right. So these are practical tips. These are practical and strategic in nature. So I'll give the first one. You can give the second one. Then I'll do the, okay. then you do the third one and I'll do the fourth one. I like where you're going with this. So one and four are mine. Yeah. Okay. Let me just make a note of that. (laughs) Here's the first one. This is a simple wake up earlier. I don't mean wake up earlier so you can work more, but what I've found is I, um, I'm kind of a nerd and I track, I like track myself on like how happy I am on a day-to-day basis. I have an aura ring. I track my sleep. I know what foods make me sleep better. I'm just kind of a weird person like that. I'm not quite a biohacker. Not like next level like that. But what I found is when I can wake up early and I can get some time to myself, 
before Chris starts bothering me in the morning, I am a happier individual. Just a note that's usually the other way around. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, waking up earlier, getting a head start on the day. And there's, there's a natural point in your day when stress, stressors start to occur. And what you really need to look at is how do you get up about an hour before those stressors start happening? Now, mm. what a mistake, a mistake that entrepreneurs make is let's say that their, their day starts at seven and they start getting blown up at seven. A mistake that people make is they'll wake up at six and they'll get on their email. Well, what you're doing is you're actually pulling those stressors to six instead of seven. Don't do that. <clears throat> get up an hour earlier and give yourself an hour that's you're kind of untouchable and yeah. you can just do things that you want to do. Yeah, you're still in incognito mode. Yeah. I actually made this mistake a week ago and I knew I shouldn't have done it. I, I woke up early and if, immediately in the morning and I had the thought before I did, but I just couldn't help myself. I, you know, my thought was don't get on Slack because, you know, we communicate with Ooh, our I team remember on this. Slack. I remember you know, I told you this. And we, there's just yeah. a bad conversation happening. It just basically ruined my whole day. And so without me taking the opportunity to fortify myself for the day, it, I was setting myself up for failure. 100%. You know, then there's just, there's this domino effect where it affects everything else. Are you getting a state of just being emotional and you're maybe pissed off and mad? And so that affects your spouse or your kids or your business partner or your clients, you know? And so you do, you need that space for sure. Your dog, your cat. Pets are important, man. All right, number two. Lay out what you actually want. Ooh, ooh, tell me about this one. This is an unbelievable thing where you ask someone, hey, what do you want? And the majority of people don't know. And because they have a lack of clarity, they have overwhelm. So if you are not consistently seeking clarity, you are going to be consistently overwhelmed in your life and your business. And it's amazing. You have to do this on a monthly, weekly, daily basis. Like you always have to be seeking clarity in your business and in your life. So if you don't have that written out, okay, what do I want to accomplish this month and have that in front of you every day, every week, you know, to go back to, then it's going to put you in a state of anxiety. Uh, you're going to feel overwhelmed. Again, you know, that emotional domino, domino effect to where you're just, you're all over the place. You're scattered and you're, you're not making efficient moves. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell a story about this real fast? Yeah. So we have a client named Jim uh, and he lives in New York. He runs multiple businesses and he's one of our yearly clients. And this is about, this is probably like six months ago. It was a good little bit over the summer. And he was just like, man, I am losing my mind. I don't know what's going on. Like he just messaged me and I was like, this dude's literally becoming a nutcase. Like what is wrong? I was like, when's the last time you've, I messaged him. When's the last time you've thought about what you want in your business? And he's like, oh, every day, every day. It's like, well, when's the last time you've like actually written it down and spent like an hour just thinking about it? And he's like, uh, I don't know. It's like, go to the Starbucks or go to a coffee shop, grab a moleskin or a journal and write down, what are you working towards? What's the goal? What is the reality or the tangible, you know, the tangible place that you want to get to that says, Hey, I've made it. And he went and he did it. And he was like, dude, five minutes in, I just felt all of the stress just roll off me. Because he's like, the reality is I think, you know, we're th- we think we're thinking about what we want every day, but we're really not. Yeah. We're thinking about, oh, I got to respond to that email. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do this. Rarely, rarely do entrepreneurs actually sit down, shut everything off and say, where am I actually headed? Mm-hmm. Like if this pattern continues, where am I going to end up and where do I want to end up? And that clarity is priceless. There's nothing yeah. that can replace that. Yeah, absolutely. Whew, that was a good point. So now he Number does it three. every week and we do it every week. So Number three, this is mine. This is yours. You got two and three. Practice appreciation. Practice. That's the key word. Underline, highlight. Thought you were going to say underline, something. Underline it on your <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Well, I, my, I'm assuming that these people are taking notes. Uh, take time and actually think about what you have and appreciate it. And I woke up this morning and... I just looked at my pond out of my bathroom window and it was, it was frozen over. It was like, had a layer of ice. And I just had this moment of appreciation of like, man, I am so thankful that I have a warm house. 
because it obviously was extremely cold last night. <laughs> Go ahead. You're, loser. You're a freaking loser. <laughs> Yeah, I was just looking out and I was like, man, I'm so thankful I have this 8,000 square foot mansion with a $100,000 kitchen. I'm so thankful I'm not a pauper. <laughs> I have to live in tents. The man, room. you have issues. Yeah, but that's true. Practicing appreciation. You actually have to do it and think about it. And I don't think we do a good enough job on this either. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit more, I would say this is a little bit too random for my liking, I reckon. <laughs> needs to be a little bit more something that we do on purpose. Yeah. Don't you agree? Yeah, like it should actually be on your calendar. Yeah, there, there are all these studies about, about gratitude. We don't have to get into them now, but gratitude, it, it actually expands your peripheral vision. It diverts resources to your prefrontal cortex, which is mm-hmm. a higher problem-solving area of your brain. It's physically, biologically makes you a smarter person. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And the lack of gratitude makes way for all sorts of emotions to be present that really are going to cause stress and deterioration. And it's amazing how something as simple as just literally writing down, what am I grateful for today can combat almost every other negative emotion that an entrepreneur feels. Yeah. Super easy. Super simple. True. Anything else to add? Nope. All right, the fourth one. This is mine. That one's yours. Guard your inputs. Guard your inputs. What do you mean? I mean, imagine going and eating at Taco Bell (laughs) for every meal, (laughs) breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a week, how you would feel. What would your output be? Your output would be disgusting. (laughs) Like, here's the thing that I don't think people actually think about enough is that the information you consume is no different in how it affects you than the food that you consume. You eat bad food, you disrespect your body and you don't sleep and you're going to get sick and die. But entrepreneurs want to live high output, high performance lives and they're strung out on a bunch of information drugs, just getting the drip and they're listening to all sorts of things that are unrelated. And a lot of times what I'll try to do is I'll try to identify what emotions do I need to feel for this particular task? And I'll just orient my inputs to make me feel that way. I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. Like we're talking about buying businesses and, and doing all sorts of things next year and there's new opportunities. And my podcasts recently have been really focused on people who have bought businesses before, people who have gone through equity deals before because I'm kind of stacking up my inputs to create the things that I need to know and things I need to feel. But I think like sometimes you just need a good old fashioned ass kicking. Like sometimes I'll just turn on Andy Frizzell and let him say the F word at me 20 times because I'm feeling down. And I think like you have, we have a gift in the information age and internet and we have a gift to be able to use the right input to create the right output. And if you're just listening to everything and you have no guardrails up, you're just going to be a loser. It's going to be hard for you to function. Yeah. I don't know if I communicated that correctly, but. No, I I think you did. In the Taco Bell example was a perfect example. Was it what the kids call on point? It was on fleek. That's what they say. On fleek? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And then just, I mean, obviously, if this probably goes without saying, but I'm just going to say it anyways. Like, if you are, if your input is negativity, whether it's people or information or whatever it might be, you like, you just have to cut that out. You have yeah. to cut it out. It is shocking how many people will put up with the negative relationship. Just want to sit there for a second. It's like so hard for people to actually cut out the negative things in their life. You just got to do it unless you're married to them and stay, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's harder today than at any other time compared to any other time in history because it's literally everywhere. You open Twitter, you open Instagram, you open Facebook. Mostly what's going to be there is something negative. 
oh, this guy's a racist. So oh, this guy hates me. Oh, this guy cheated on this person. Oh, this guy was murdered. <laughs> like yeah. you have to be very intentional about what you are allowing to come into your life. I just had a great joke. <laughs> That's why I only follow Donald Trump on Twitter <laughs> for this exact reason. Oh man. Cause every other happy. news is fake. <laughs> All right. Hacks to being happy. Go do it. Go be happy. Be happy. Be a fountain. Be a fountain. Uh, hey, don't forget that we do have a gift for you guys. Traffic and funnels.com slash gift G I F T. It's been a while since we talked about that. And, um, also, if you like this, share it with somebody who you feel like needs it and leave us a review. And a review doesn't have to be five stars. It can be two or three or whatever, but we are driven by impacts. And if there's anything that we can do differently or better for you, we're game to do it. But we love yeah. seeing your feedback and your thoughts and just connecting with you. So definitely hop on, leave us a review. Tell us what you think, what you would like us to talk about. Get the gifts. We'll that keeps on time. giving. <laughs> All right. See ya. Bye. Guys, wanted to let you know about something really exciting coming up that Chris and I are doing in January. Okay. So the fourth week of January during a Wednesday, Thursday, we are hosting our very first live event that's open to the public. Now we've done a lot of live events with our private 12 month consulting and advertising clients. These people have paid us anywhere from 40 to $60,000 to work with us for a 12 month stretch. But this is actually the first time that we're gathering people in a room where you don't have to pay that kind of money. And we're going to be breaking down some of the tools, frameworks, systems, advertising strategies, copywriting, sales, et cetera, for how we built our business and really grew it quickly from the zero to about the $5 million per year mark. Now, this is a huge opportunity. We are limiting it to 30 people because if we have 180, 300 people, 500 people, we lack the customization that we're known for, being able to go specific into certain people's businesses, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, I want to give you that information. And if you want to be a part of this or just get more information on what it's going to look like, how it's going to work, you can go to trafficandfunnels.com slash event, and it'll put you on a page that will give you the details, the itinerary, and the costs associated and how to get an event Ticket. I recommend doing this quickly. Uh, go check it out. Peruse through that page if it sounds like something you're interested in. Fill out a quick form. You don't have to pay anything to get more information and have a conversation with somebody on our team. And we can kind of tell where you're at, whether it makes sense for you to be there or not. And really, really, really looking forward to this special party that we're throwing. Talk soon.